Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan, welcome to my car for the start of another reading vlog. I am very excited about this one. It's going to be a quick hitter and hopefully enlightening about these two books that I have been anxious to read for a while. So like the title says, I'm going to be reading two books that I thought were the same book. <laughs> I don't know if this is just me, but let me know if you have seen either of these covers floating around like in bookstores, on Instagram, and if you had a really distinct idea of what each of these books are. Because I did not. I know that I've seen both of these covers randomly out and about and just thought they were the same book and I think it's because obviously the covers look very similar. The letters are like rainbow colors which I really enjoy. I love the covers. Plus they both have the word never in the title so when I eventually obtained both of these books I thought that I definitely want to read them close together so that I can compare the two stories and find out like are they basically the same book or are they very different and just happen to have similar covers. So that is the plan. If you want me to give you a synopsis of both books, I could not do that. I honestly don't know anything about either of these books. I can read just a quick little snippet. I don't want to know too much before I just dive into reading them. But so the first one, We Were Never Here by Andrea Bartz. This was apparently a Reese's Book Club pick. I believe it's a mystery thriller. And let's see it. I'm just going to read the very top part of this. It says, A backpacking trip has deadly consequences in this chilling new novel from Andrea Bartz, the best-selling author of The Lost Night and The Herd. I have not read either of those books, but I do like books about, like, backpacking, camping, being in the wilderness. So I'm excited to see what this one's about. And then Never Saw Me Coming by Vera Kurian is the other book. Let's find out what this one is about. The very top says, You should never trust a psychopath, but what if you had no choice? Hmm, just skimming the rest of the synopsis. It says a student in a study is found murdered in the psychology building and a dangerous game of cat and mouse begins. Very interesting. So it sounds like these are going to have pretty different vibes. Obviously, they're both thrillers, so there's that. But it sounds like one's set in the wilderness, one is set at like a college. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started reading these books. I don't know which one I'm going to read first, but I will let you know, of course. I'll give you a little bit more of a synopsis once I get into them or a little bit more of like how I would describe the books. And then of course by the end I'll let you know my thoughts and maybe I'll let you know if you should pick one up over the other or how different these books really are. <laughs> Hello, I have my first update. I am 138 pages into Never Saw Me Coming. I decided to start with this one because I have the lower expectations for it. Uh, just knowing it's like set at a school and something with psychopaths. It just sounds like potentially a slower story, which is not always what I enjoy with thrillers but so far I'm actually enjoying it more than I thought I would. So this is about our main character, Chloe, who is a freshman in college, and she is going to this college because they have like a study going on about psychopaths. And she is a self-proclaimed psychopath, or she like took this test to get into this program that deemed that she is a psychopath. So she's agreeing to be studied uh, throughout her day-to-day -day activities by the psychology department, which is very interesting. Um, I was a little worried because Chloe also has this vengeance against a person who also goes to this college and she states right at the beginning that she is going to try to kill him. And so I was a little worried this was gonna come off as like a serial killer's perspective, which is not something that I have liked in the past in books. Um, thinking of like My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing or what was the most recent, oh, the other book by Samantha Downing, For Your Own Good. I didn't like either of those. I also don't like the TV show Dexter. I just don't like being in the mind of a serial killer or somebody who wants to be a serial killer. I for some reason just don't find it that interesting. A lot of other people do. I just don't. And so I was worried that this was going to be that perspective. However, it's shifted away from that a lot already. And we're finding out that Chloe is not as in control as she thinks she is, or as I maybe thought she would be from the beginning. So we're getting a lot more curveballs thrown at her, which I really enjoy. So I'm interested to see where this goes from here. Today is a Monday. I'm actually home from work today. Yesterday, I suddenly started feeling sick. This is the second time in the last three months that I've just gotten like a completely sudden, violent stomach 
bug and I'm not sure what the reason is. Um, the first time in February, it lasted two full days and I was like completely bedridden or bathroom ridden and I couldn't do anything else. This time it seems to be passing a lot faster, which I'm happy about, but I did just stay home today to take it easy. I'm working from home as much as I can and doing the things I can do on my computer, but I'm taking it easy. And actually I'm excited because right now it is 10.45 a.m. and at 11 my time, Jacqueline will be doing some reading sprints on her Patreon. And usually when she does her Monday reading sprints, I can't join because I'm at work, but I figured today I could take a little break from work at that time and do some reading sprints. So that'll be really fun and that will help me knock out a little bit more of this book and hopefully listening more to this book. The audiobook is on Hoopla, so I've been listening to it as well as reading it physically. So I should be able to knock it out pretty quickly. So I'm excited about that. I'm ready to get back into the story and I will update you either closer to the end or once I finished it, letting you know more of my thoughts on how this book is going. But so far, so good. Okay, it is Tuesday morning, the next day. Last night I did finish Never Saw Me Coming and I liked it. I didn't love it. What's interesting about this book is, like I said, we're following this main character who's a psychopath. She's in this psychopath program at her college. So she's meeting and interacting with other psychopaths. Um, I guess the couple interesting things are, one is they don't seem that crazy. <laughs> and maybe that's the point is it's trying to say that, you know, psychopaths aren't always just insane murderers, or maybe I don't know if this author actually knows a lot about psychopaths. She does have a PhD in social psychology, so she probably doesn't know what she's talking about, but I just found it very interesting the talk about psychopaths and what makes a psychopath and the fact that so many of these characters seemed completely normal to me. If a little insensitive sometimes, sure, but in general, a lot like a lot of people I know, which maybe that's the other point. The other thing that's interesting about this book is that it kind of turns into more of a murder mystery book. Within the college, uh, a couple students are turning up dead and the psychopath program and psychology department thinks they have something to do with it or it might be targeting them. So they look into it and try to solve the mystery. I'm coming to find and believe that I don't think I like murder mysteries as much as other people do or as much as I thought I did. I think it seems like because it's such a staple in the mystery thriller genre, you can't not like murder mysteries, but I almost always at the end of a murder mystery find myself like not really caring about who did it. And typically in these books, everyone is made to seem guilty or has a motive of some sort. And because I'm the type of reader who I don't try to solve the mystery, I'm kind of just along for the ride, then by the end, once it's revealed who the killer is, it's like, yeah, okay, I can see that. You gave good evidence, they have good reasons. A lot of other people also had reasons, so I could have believed anyone. I just don't feel shocked and I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel like I've solved a mystery or anything. I don't know. I just feel very uninvested when we have a whole cast of characters that's made to seem potentially guilty. So I don't know. That's my existential crisis of the day is finding out that I don't really like murder mysteries. And what do I do with that information? Because there are so many murder mysteries that are out there and that people recommend. I don't know. But if you do like murder mysteries, definitely would recommend Never Saw Me Coming. If you like the idea of a book set at a college following psychopaths, then I would also recommend this book to you. I think I'm going to give it three stars, but I think I'm going to be generally unpopular in that opinion. And I would actually recommend it to more people with the thought that they will enjoy it more than I did. So that has never saw me coming. And I'm very excited now to be getting to the other book. We were never here. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I think this is going to be more my type of book. I think I'm going to enjoy the plot a little bit more. Um, the synopsis says, Emily is having the time of her life. She's in the mountains of Chile with her best friend, Kristen, on their annual reunion trip, and the women are feeling closer than ever. But on the last night of the trip, Emily enters the hotel suite to find blood and broken glass on the floor. 
Kristen says that the cute backpacker she brought to their room attacked her and she had no choice but to kill him in self-defense. I'm gonna stop reading there. Sounds interesting. I'm hoping there's like an outdoor element. I was kind of thinking this was like set in the wilderness, but it might not be. But I will let you know either way what this ends up being. So now I'm off to work. It's a Tuesday, like I mentioned. I unfortunately don't have the audiobook for this one, so I'm not gonna be able to get through it quite as fast, but I am going to go to work a little bit early. I've been doing this thing lately because my kids have been getting up so early lately. I've been getting them up off to daycare and then I've been going to work early and then just sitting in the parking lot and reading for like 15 minutes before going in. And it's actually a really great way to get some pages in before you even start the day and like center yourself before you walk into work. So I highly recommend it. I probably wouldn't do it if I could just like sleep that extra time. But since my kids are getting me up anyway, I'm going to use that time for me. Also, you might be wondering if I am feeling better. I am feeling better. I was able to eat like a normal dinner last night, which is good. And so this morning my stomach feels back to normal. So I hope that I'm completely over whatever the heck that was and ready to move on and not be sick. So back to work, back to normal life and feeling good about it. All right, I am back with an update. I had every intention of updating you partway through. We were never here, but I don't really know what happened. I would say that I just got sucked in and didn't want to update until I was done, but it actually took a really long time to get through this book, not because I wasn't enjoying it, just because of my busy plans and not being able to sit down and just dedicate uh, like long chunks of time to reading this book. It just took forever and I felt like I was just getting like little chips at it and there was never really a good time to sit down and update it. So I finished this book and I definitely have thoughts. They are definitely different from my thoughts on this book. Uh, but to start with the synopsis of this book, this is following two best friends, or really we're following one girl who has a best friend. And the two of them have for the last several years been going on international adventures together as a way to kind of reconnect every six months to a year because they live in very different locations and use those trips as a time to, you know, connect with each other. And we start this book on a trip with them in somewhere in South America and it is a year after their previous trip where something super dramatic happened. And it basically like consumed the life of our main character throughout that year. And now they're on their next trip and our main character is trying to feel out her best friend. Like, is she feeling guilty? Is this consuming her life at all? And then when they're on this trip in present day, another similar event happens that they find themselves in the middle of this like criminal situation. I don't want to give too many details away, so I feel like that's not a great way of describing the plot, so I apologize. But I think the best way I can describe this is it is a perfect mix between Reckless Girls and then the movie The Weekend Away on Netflix with Leighton Meester. Basically that book and that movie also follow two girl best friends who go on trips together and find themselves in the middle of crazy situations. So because I loved Reckless Girls and because I enjoyed that movie, I also enjoyed the first part of this book because it was giving me really similar vibes. However, the later part of this book then returns our main character to her normal life. And so she's trying to cope again with what happened when they were on vacation in her normal life. And that was a lot less interesting to me. So it kind of fell off there at the end. I wish we would have spent more time or all of the time like on the vacation in the heat of the action. But I can also obviously appreciate that this is different from those two stories in that way. And I wouldn't want it to be an exact replica of either of those two stories or else I would say it's copying. But I think that is the reason that I did enjoy those two stories more and why I'm giving this book a three stars. I think a lot of people who maybe read Reckless Girls and didn't enjoy it wouldn't enjoy this one anymore. So I'm not any more apt to recommend it because again, it's kind of a weird mix between like the vacation vibes and then the real life slog. So that's a little bit of a bummer that I didn't quite live up to my expectations. 
it's a little bit of a bummer that both of these books ended up being three stars. They are very different and I would recommend them to very different audiences and recommend you go into them with very different mindsets. Obviously this one is much more of the almost dark academia but set at a college and then this one is following girls who go on vacation, go wild, and get themselves into a mess. If either of those plots sound super interesting to you, I would recommend picking it up. Obviously give it a chance if you think you would enjoy it. However, I'm not shouting from the rooftops about either of them. So is this video kind of a fail? Maybe, but it's also a win because now these are very differentiated in my mind. I know what each of these books is. I know if and when I would recommend them in the future. So I guess that is a good thing. I am no longer confusing them as the same book. So I guess that does it for this video. Kind of a quick hitter, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've read either of these books. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.